So today we're going to add um, rational expressions when the denominators are not the same. So first we have to practice finding the least common denominator because you need to find a least common denominator to add fractions together. So for these two rational expressions, we're going to list all the prime factors. So for this first one, the 12 can be written as 3 times 4. Well, 4 is 2 times 2, and then 3. So this is our 12. We have 2 x's and 4 y's. Now for the 18, x to the third y squared, 18 is um, 9 times 2. So we have 1, 2 in common. We have a 3. We have another 3 I'm going to hold out here. So there's our 18. We have 3 x's, and we have 2 y's. So now looking at all of the prime factors, we want to pair up to find the least common denominator. So if we're looking at an example of numbers, like up here, one-half and two-thirds, well, the two and the three, six is the least common denominator because each fraction can be written as a sixth. So we need to look for all the highest number of each factor. So since there's two twos here and only one in this um, and from the bottom, we're all going to take two twos. We need two threes. We need three x's and four y's. So the least common denominator is going to be 4 times 9, which is 36, x to the third, y to the fourth. So if you're looking back up here, you can see x to the third is our highest number of x's, and y to the fourth is our highest number of y's. So if we were going to make these fractions have the same denominator, we would have to multiply this one by another x, but this one by y squared, and then numbers to get them to 36. So we're going to try that again. So for 20, x to the x, y to the third, 20 is 2 times 10, which is 2, 2, and 5 x and then 3 y's. Now for this one, we've got a 3, I'll put that out here, and a 5, 4 x's, and 2 y's. So looking for my least common denominator, I need 4, I need this 3, I need a 5, We need four x's and three y's. So we've got four times 15, x to the fourth, y to the third. If we leave this as four, five, four times 15 temporarily, we could see if we were going to make these one, um, have a common denominator, what you would have to multiply 20 by and what you'd have to multiply 15 by. But to list out just the common denominator, we're actually going to multiply 4 and 15 together. So our common denominator is 60, x to the fourth, y to the third. Okay, one more. So now when we actually have an expression, not just what term in our denominator, we're going to factor. So here I can factor out a 2x squared, and I'm left with 1 minus 5x. And here we can factor out an x, and we're left with x squared minus 3x minus 10. 
But does this factor? Oh, it does. What multiplies to negative 10 that adds to negative 3? Do negative 5 and positive 2. So when I list my prime factors of this first expression, it's 2, 2x's, two and then I need 1 minus 5x as an expression. And for this one, it's going to be x, and then x minus 5, and x plus 2. So when I'm writing my least common denominator, I'm going to have 2x squared, x minus 5, x plus 2, and 1 minus 5x. Okay, so I want you to practice these three, finding the least, or I'm sorry, these four problems, find the least common denominator, pause the video here, see if you can answer all four questions, and then uh, we'll go over the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. Check to see if that matches what you got. So for this first one, I'm looking and they share a 4, so that's why we have the 4 once. We need this x and we need this x plus 1. Now for this one, you have to factor first. We can factor out a 3x from this term. So 3 and 21, well 3 is a factor of 21, so that's why if we choose 21, uh, we need x squared and the x minus 5. This is a difference of 2 squares. Because these share a 2x plus 1, we only need it once. We need this 2x minus 1, and we need this term's x. And again, we have to factor here. So we need the x minus 6 term, the x plus 3, and the x. So now we're going to use that least common denominator to add our fractions together. So for number one, the common denominator is going to be 2x squared. So to add these fractions together, We need to multiply 1 half so that my denominator has an x squared. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by x squared. But if we multiply it on the bottom, we have to do it on the top because you're multiplying by 1. So you're not changing the quantity. You're just changing the way the expression looks. And this one needs a 2 over 2. So when I add these together, 1 times x squared is x squared. And 3 times 2 is 6. And that is our final answer. So now for number 2, first let's factor this so we can find our common denominator. Okay, so our common denominator is going to be 2x times x plus 3. So because this part of our expression has both of those terms in the denominator, I don't have to do anything to the numerator here. But this one, we need an x plus 3 on the bottom and an x plus 3 on the top. Now my denominator is 2x times x plus 3. And then when I add here, I'm going to just do 3 times x plus 3. So now we can simplify this can distribute the 3 to both pieces. And then combine our numerator like terms. 3x plus x is 4x plus 9. Okay, I want you to pause the video and try 3 and 4. And number 5 down here. 
Okay, for number three, our common denominator is going to be x plus 5 times x plus 1. So this term needs an x plus 5. This one needs an x plus 1. So when I multiply here, I'm going to have 3 times x plus 1 plus 4 times x plus 5. But we have to simplify that. This is 3x plus 3 plus 4x plus 20. So our final answer is 7x plus 23. For number four, you have to factor this. This is the difference of two squares. So my common denominator is going to be x plus one times x minus one. This already has the x minus one, so it needs an x plus one. This can stay the same. I'm going to distribute the x here. Now as a final answer, I'm going to combine my like terms. And we could factor an x out of the top, since they all share an x, to see if maybe we can simplify our fraction. But we cannot. There's no terms to cancel here, so this is our final answer. Okay, and last but not least, is this what you got as your answer for this last one? Let's see, this factors to x minus 8 and x minus 4. So that's why our common denominator is that. This term needs an x minus 4 on the top and bottom. Oh, let's see if this factors. Um, x plus 3. Nope. Nothing multiplies to negative 3. That's going to add to positive 1. So let's combine our fractions here. I'm going to rewrite this numerator. Distribute this 3x. Now we can combine like terms. Let's see, does that numerator factor? We could split the middle. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Anything multiplied to negative 12 that adds to negative 11. Let's do that work over here. So what? We're multiplying the negative 12. to negative 11. So we can do 1 and 12. So minus 12x plus x minus 3. Factor out a greatest common factor. So our numerator is 4x plus 1 times x minus 3. And that is the final answer. Okay, so the book has some other good problems to practice. If you want to try any of these to see if you're getting the hang of it, pause the video, and then when you come back, I will have the answers and you can check them. Okay, so here are all the answers. 